Hello, YPS readers. Yannick here for Yannick's Photo School, and we're back in Lightroom today. And I've decided to uh, start a new category on my blog called Before and After. Now, this is uh, not new. I kind of borrowed that from Matt over at uh, Lightroom Killer Tips. I saw him do that. He actually started that not too long ago, and I thought it was just a great idea. And I think it's just a perfect learning tool to see before and after of a couple of images and my thought process on why I decided to go that way. So, um, hey Matt, thanks a lot for the, uh, the tip and uh, hope you don't mind, but I'll be starting on some uh, before and afters as well. And uh, let's go right to, to it. Today we're going to be looking at two pictures I took in New York City uh, not too long ago. And one was from the uh, Brooklyn Bridge and a view of the Statue of Liberty on Staten Island. All right, so I was using my 18 to 200 uh, walk around lens on that on my D300 body, and uh, I want to. I actually arrived at the post processed image that you see on your screen right now. Now this is the original image straight out of the camera. Now I, you could have went either way. You could have went with a cooler post-processing approach, I decided to go with a more of a sunset-y type of photo to get this final image here that I like. And now, let me show you the steps I took to get there. All right, let's start with, from a fresh image. Now, first of all, to get a warm tint, you need to play with your white balance, uh, not your white balance, yeah, exactly, your white balance. So, I moved this up quite a bit, actually, around there. And uh, when I thought it was warm enough, I, I, I thought uh, we removed most of the blue out, and I thought that was warm enough like that. The next thing I did was play with clarity. And I actually boosted clarity all the way up to 100 just to get more detail out of the statue and the island there. After that, I kind of came in here and boosted vibrance a little bit, give it more of a punch, like so. And I thought that the island wasn't black enough and the statue didn't pop out enough. So I just played with my blacks here and boosted that up a little bit, like so. Now I think we're getting the perfect orange tint there. So if I do go back to my post-processed image, and that's good. Now what do you think I, I did to get that pink in the sky? You're absolutely right, a graduated filter, color filter. And I clicked on the color palette, it came out, I selected a nice pinkish hue, and then went on an angle though, just uh, to make it more natural, went on an angle like so. Now I thought that that was just a little too pink for my taste. We wanted it still to look natural, so I, I toned it down quite a bit. And this is what it gave me. If I look at the other image, and this one, they're pretty similar. Now, of course, what's missing is the reflection of that pink in the water. Remember that water acts as a mirror, so you want to reflect that in. So again, another graduated filter, same color, right into the water. Not too much, just like so. And again, toning it down, way down like this. And there you go. Let's look at uh, my other one and this one. All like uh, the, the, the difference mainly is uh, in the contrast here in the in the island. I probably boosted the contrast up a little bit, like like so. Reduced the vibrance a little bit. Let's see. That's uh, still a bit more punchy. More blacks. The blacks are good. Bring the vibrance down a little bit. We're getting there. So it gives you an idea. Not bad. Almost the same thing. So those were the steps that I took to go from this to this. I like that feeling of a sunset photo. Now you could have played it the other way and went cool, whichever way. That, that's how I saw my final image and that's how I post-processed it. Now the second one is during a street performance. And I went from this image here, I waited for loading, to this post-processed image here. 
It kind of looks like HDR, but it's not not at all. All done, it's all done in Lightroom. So the first thing I did was to straighten my image. I found that it was crooked, so I straightened it like so. And then again, I came in. I think I adjusted the exposure just a little bit. I boosted the clarity up to 100 again. That's that's what gives it the uh, HDR-ish type of feel to it. And I, for this whole New York series, I kind of desaturated the image uh, a bit by reducing the vibrance. Now, if I look at this one and this one, the vibrance is pretty much the same. Oops. Maybe a little too much. Good. Next thing I did was to uh, put a vignette on this. So going into lens correction, vignette amount, and setting the midpoint looks about right. If we look at the two images, there we go. Not bad. It's almost the same. Actually, the midpoint is probably a little, a little deeper in, like so. And the next thing I did, I thought his face was a little too dark with the shadow of the uh, acrobat above him. So I just came in, used the adjustment brush, plus exposure. And I'll do this really, really briefly. I just came in here and lightened his face up using the adjustment brush. I didn't put auto mask on because we want to get the whole brush. I'm doing this very rough right now. I was more in detail before. But it just gives you a bit of an idea of how this was accomplished. All right. If we zoom out, I actually did the arm too, but I'll skip that. If you look at before and after, you see I missed some spot, but you get the idea. So this is how I post-process those two images. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on before and after. Yannick Chauvin signing out for Yannick's Photo School. Bye-bye.